All right, we're going to take what we've learned in the previous five videos and combine them into a, a real project that you might do with your, uh, with your students, with your staff. What we're going to do is we're going to create a newsroom scene. We're going to take uh, an anchor who's reading the news in front of a blue screen, and we're going we're gonna to chroma overlay that person into a, a newsroom. Then we're going to lower a TV from the ceiling and do a picture in picture as the anchor throws it out to a reporter in the field. So we're going to be combining the overlay types. We're going to be combining multiple videos playing at one time. And we're going to be combining the moving overlay. So all of the techniques that you learned in the previous five videos, we're going to apply to one singular project. So hang with me, because there's definitely going to be a, a lot of rendering the video and then re-importing the video. Because remember, Movie Maker only likes to do one of these effects at a time. So we'll have to render the effect, bring it back in, and add the second technique and then the third technique. So hang with me, and, uh, and we'll get through this. But it's a really fun project, uh, easy to do, uh, lots of ways that you could expand this with your kids. Uh, so what we want to do. You'll see that, uh, uh, as usual, we're going to add our effects to the add-on TFX folder, and we're going to add our images into the Movie Maker 2.6 shared folder. So over here, we have our, our source files that you downloaded. So the first thing we want to do is in the source video folder, you're going to see this TV transparent PNG file. If you'll go ahead and add that to your images, this is the TV we're going to lower from the ceiling. And then if you'll go into your add-on TFX, and then over in your source, the master XML folder, there are a number of XML files here. There's the chroma that's going to get rid of the blue screen for our news anchor. There is the picture-in-picture -picture TV so that we can play video on that TV in the studio. Moving overlay, this is going to lower the TV from the ceiling. And you can edit all of these using the techniques we discussed previously. But for now, we're just going to grab them all, and we're going to drop them into our add-on TFX folder, and now we're ready to launch Movie Maker. All right, so Movie Maker's open. We're going to begin to import all of our clips into Movie Maker that we're going to use to build this project. So we're going to import a news anchor on a blue screen. We're going to import the newsroom background, which is just a picture. We're going to uh, import the clip of you know, hey, let's go out to the field to talk to Amanda. we got to import the clip of Amanda talking. Uh, and then we're going to build all those together. So we'll go File, Import into Collections like normal. And for me, I have these clips stored on my desktop. You may have them stored elsewhere. But you're looking for that source video folder that you downloaded. And the videos that we're looking for are the blue screen. This is our news anchor. The classroom WMV, this is the reporter in the field. And the newsroom bitmap, this is the still image of the newsroom. We're not going to import the moving TV because this is part of our overlay. This is not one of our source clips. So we'll import all of these. And let's work with our news anchor first. So the very first thing that we want to do, you'll remember that when we do, um, when we do a chroma overlay like blue screen, your first clip is your background. Your second clip is your video that is going to lay on top of your background. So the first thing that we want to import is, that we want to put in our timeline, is our newsroom. This is just a still image. And the default in Movie Maker for a still image, when you drag a picture into your timeline, is five seconds. Five seconds is not going to be enough time of this background picture for my news anchor to sit in top of. So I need to know my news anchor video, if I, if I come over here and, and look at my news anchor, I can see that it is 20 seconds long, which means my still image needs to last at least 20 seconds for this effect to work. So I simply grab the end of it here, and I'll get this little double red arrow, and that means I can drag it to the right, and you'll see my little timer incrementing, and I'm going to drag it out to like 22 seconds or so. So now my background image is long enough that I can drag my news anchor down. And you'll recall from the previous video, when we want to overlay them, you grab it and you push it into the previous video as far as you can. If you go too far, it'll flip. 
And as well, if we zoom in, the more zoomed in we are, the more we can see this little leftover bit and drag more and more in. All right, so it's dragged, it, we drug the video in, but the default transition is to fade. So if we scrub through our timeline here, we'll see that very slowly this news anchor is fading into from the studio to the, the anchor on the blue screen. We don't want the fade transition. We want our new transition, our transition that did not exist in Movie Maker until we put those custom XMLs in. And the transition you're looking for is called Chroma Blue. This won't exist until you put those XML files in the add-on TFX folder. And if we drag Chroma Blue down here and let go, fade changes to Chroma Blue. And we now have a news anchor reading the news in a studio. So we went and grabbed a fake studio background from the internet. Um, in this case, I, I found a still image of a studio. I edited it a little to change it to Lamar CISD. And we filmed our, our kids in front of a blue screen. Um, uh, you, blue screens are easy. You can just paint a wall a bright color blue, um, light it up with some shop lights, and away you go. Your kids will have a blast. It doesn't have to just be news in a newsroom. I mean, the kids, this would allow your kids to make their background a storybook they've been reading. And now they can be a character in the storybook as they explain the plot of the story or the main characters. There's so many curriculum tie-ins that, that can happen here if your students are allowed to, to be on top. It could be a math problem and they could literally walk themselves through the math problem. So lots of opportunities to be creative here. A lot of fun. Now, we want to lower a TV screen into the studio, but we can't do that right now. We've already applied one of these special high-end effects, so we need to render our movie, and then we'll re-import the movie so that we can add a second effect to it. And that's real easy to do. We go File, Save Movie. We'll save it on my computer, the quality for my computer. File name, we will call this uh, Studio. Can name it anything you want. Make a note of where you're saving it. In this case, it's going to my videos. We're going to do it to the best quality because we're going to be using it again. We'll say next. It's not going to take very long on, on this computer. Depending on the speed of your computer, it could take a little more time. But we'll let it render out. Now, when it finishes, we could play the movie, but I, I don't want to see the movie. I'm not done with it. So I'll uncheck that and say finish. All right, so we are now done with this timeline. So I'm going to select all my stuff on the timeline and hit the delete key and I'm going to clean my timeline up and I'm going to file, import into collections and I need to go find the movie I just made. I said that it was in my videos and look there it is, studio. So I'll double click that and I will drag it down to my timeline and here is my news anchor reading the news in the studio but there's no more special effects applied. They've already been rendered into the video. But one thing that you'll note here is that at the beginning of the video, it's just the background of the studio. There, there is no news anchor. Remember, I made the, the picture long enough to contain the entire clip of the news anchor, and I actually made it too long. So I have some dead space at the beginning. We can go ahead and get rid of that now. So I'm going to scrub the timeline until my news anchor appears. I can actually just hit play, and I'll watch. Oh, there he is. And now I'll use my previous frame buttons to back it up one frame at a time. Oh, and there he disappeared. I'll come forward. And this little button right here is our split button. It's, it's like a pair of scissors. I'll click it, and this clip has now split into clip one and two. Clip one is just the studio. I don't want it. I'll select it, hit the delete key, and it's gone. At the end of the clip, I'm going to have the same issue. My picture is going to run out, and my news anchor is going to be in front of blue because I couldn't drag the whole clip in or, or it would have flipped. So I'll back up right before the blue and I'm going to split. I'm going to grab that little piece I don't want and hit the delete key. And now I have a clean video clip to apply the next effect to. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to lower a TV screen into the studio. You remember uh, from a previous video that when we move images on top of the screen, they need to be those, those transparent PNG files. I provided you with the TV clip, the TV image. 
we put it in the correct folder so now it's available and moving overlays are powered by the titles and credits portion of Movie Maker. So we're going to go to Tools, Titles and Credits, and we're going to insert a new credit on the selected clip. So add a title on the selected clip. And you'll recall that we cannot insert a title with no text. But we don't want text, so we have to put at least a space. Now we can insert a title. So let's change our title animation. And you're going to see two new titles because we put those custom XML files in. Lower newsroom screen, and look at there. When we select that one, it previews it for us. And it's a TV lowering in in the top. Love it. So we're going to say done, add title to movie. So here is my title overlay. It's this little clip down here at the bottom. But I want to make sure I have it in the right place. So let's play my video, and I'm going to listen to it. So he's saying, let's go to our field reporter, but I need the TV to come down a little earlier. All you do is grab your title and drag it to the point where you want the transition to occur. You can even make the TV lower slower by making it longer. You can make the TV come in faster by shrinking the transition. This looks good to me right here, so I'll have the TV lower at this point. Let's go to our field reporter. All right, so we have our TV lowering, but you'll notice as soon as the transition ends, the TV disappears. So I need to lower the TV, and then I need the TV to stay still. But in moving overlays, you cannot define in that XML file, you can't say move from point A to point B and then stop. You can only say move from A to B and then the transition's over. So what I've done is I've created two XML file transitions. One that lowers the TV from A to B and then ends, and then an XML file that has the TV at position B and it doesn't move. So you can move things all over the screen, but you have to do each move with a different transition. I know it sounds complicated, but I have watched a first grader. Uh, the, the book was uh, Busy Busy Bees, and she put herself in the book, and then she created a bunch of XML transitions where she had bees that flew all over the screen and she was pointing at all the bees but each move of the bee was a different transition and she had to apply them uh, separately now the nice thing about moving overlays is they're not really a special effect so you can apply them all at one time to the video you don't have to do one render the video do a second render the video so we can go ahead and add our TV lowered effect right now and that's what we're gonna do we're going to move our time, our playhead out here away from this transition because we don't, we don't want them to be on top of each other. And we will say tools, titles and credits, title on the selected clip. We're going to put a space in so we have some text. We're going to change the title animation from lower newsroom screen to TV lowered. This one doesn't move. It just stays there. We're going to say done. And now I have a second title with a TV that is already lowered into my newsroom. I want them to be right next to each other. I don't want this empty space in the middle. So I'll grab this one and I'll slide it over till they're touching. So now, they're, now I lower my newsroom screen and my lowered screen is simply right there. And then I want this, the lowered newsroom screen to stay for a while. Right now it's only five seconds long and it disappears. Well, you know what to do here. Select the clip, put your cursor at the end, and drag it out as long as you want. We'll make it last the entire clip. So now my news anchor talks, my TV lowers, and then my TV remains stationary. All right, at that point, the next thing that we want to do is have video start to play on that TV. But that's a special effect and we can't do it at the same time as these moving overlays. So let's go ahead and render this movie and then we'll suck it back in and we'll do our last transition. So file, save movie file, my computer, next. We need to give it a name. This one's gonna be Studio with TV. Make a note of where you're saving it. It's still in my videos. Next, best quality, next. 
We'll go ahead and let it render. It's going pretty quickly on this machine. And then we're going to bring it back in to finish the sequence. So we'll say finish. And let's clean our timeline up. We don't need any of these videos anymore. So we're going to delete the studio. We're going to delete our TV lowering. We're going to delete the TV that's already lowered. And we need to import the video we just made, Studio with TV. And we'll drag it down to our timeline. So now we have one video that has a news anchor in a studio. It has a TV being lowered from the screen, from the ceiling, and a TV that's stationary in the studio. Well, now it's time to put some video on this TV screen. The video we want to put was a pre-recorded clip of, in this case, a, a lady named Amanda who's out in the field interviewing a student. Remember, you put the video that you want on top second. So we're going to put Amanda's clip here second in the timeline. And then we're going to push it in. But in this case, I don't want to push it as far as possible because I don't want the video to start until the TV is lowered. So let me find where on my video my TV comes in. All right, so my anchor just stopped talking. We want Amanda's video to start right here. So I kind of make a note here of where my playhead is, and I want to push this video all the way to that point. So I'll push it in. That looks about right. And I can check it right now because it's, it's a fade transition, so I can preview it. Looks to be in about the right place. Now I need to replace the fade transition because fade is not what I want. I want the video to play in a little window right on top of that TV picture so it looks like it's playing on the TV. So we're going to go to our video transitions. And if you scroll down, if you have added those XML files to your master TFX folder, you will have a new transition called Picture on TV, where the size of the video and the location of the video are already programmed in to be in the right place. So drag that down. And my video is now going to play on top of the TV, but you cannot preview it anymore. Remember, Movie Maker does not like to play two videos at the same time like this. So you can't preview it. You just got to trust that it's there. Let's export our movie, save our movie file, and let's see if we have it. So we went File, Save Movie, My Computer. We'll give it a name. We're going to call it Master. This is our final clip. We'll say Next, Next. It's going to save our movie. Going pretty quick here. All right, in this case, I do want to play the movie when I finish because I think I'm done. So let's see what our final project looks like. Hopefully, we've got a news anchor in a studio, a TV lowering, a TV staying lowered, a video that will start playing on the TV, and then as soon as the news anchor clip ends, it should go full screen and just keep playing the clip of Amanda in the classroom. Fingers crossed. Let's see what we have. News anchor is talking in the studio. We're happy so far. It's a little pixelated. That's normal for Movie Maker. The TV lowers. The TV stays there. My video appears on the TV screen. And now we cut full screen to the video to finish it out. Fantastic. So. We have done something that Movie Maker should not be able to do. And by simply adding those custom transitions, we have created a layer of special effects to create a very rich media experience for your kids. Like I said, great for news projects, uh, uh, children's books, uh, explaining science concepts. There are so many things that the kids can do. And don't be scared of letting the kids dig into this. Um, I, I, like I, I, I've said in the other videos, I have watched first graders on up be able to tackle these projects. Now at the lower level, the teacher has already set up the XML files for them. The kids just build the project. But at the higher level, the kids can edit the XML transitions themselves and, and create something completely unique. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this set of tutorials. My name's Chris Nielsen. Uh, good luck with some Movie Maker training.